Yeah, but money's money, and money and, and it kind of affects everybody. All kind of different uh, businesses, all kind of different avenues out there. Um, I started the week off. I uh, knew that uh, this week we were going to have uh, the CPI data and uh, some meetings with uh, Fed, uh, the Fed. Uh, I think it's Jerome Powell. And um, so I kind of figured stocks were going to stay stagnant this week. But um, sure enough, when uh, the word came down that uh, that bank got taken over by the FDIC, it was a ripple effect. So this whole week, um, you know, there was a couple stocks here and there that may have benefited. Uh, I believe uh, as everybody made a run on their banks, I seen JP Morgan Bank, their stock price kind of kind of went up. And uh, so, you know, that's kind of an effect when you got a, a proven business you know, things like that, you know, really don't affect you. Um, you know, when you're doing good business, people see that and, uh, you know, they'll kind of gravitate to you. Um, uh, I was looking at some of my other stocks that uh, don't have anything to do with financials. Um, I have a couple of stocks that I like Ford Company and uh, even though, you know, that's the auto industry, but certainly because it's banking and because a lot of companies have uh, debt and investments from financial institutions, uh, my Ford uh, stock went from, you know, around $15 down into the 12s. And, uh, you know, that's just one thing you got to live with when you're investing. Um, I spent the week again, uh, doing some reading in the books that I had uh, talked about in my first video. Um, one good thing about it is uh, it's easy to, to kind of conceptualize uh, the information that's given you and put it into, uh, into work for you. Uh, I kind of took a reevaluation of some of my stocks and I got some stocks that uh, I would say are kind of overlap. I got some ETFs that uh, kind of are driven by uh, a sector. I got some that are the, the real estate REITs. I got some that uh, again, uh, do the cover calls for you and that's how they generate their money. But when you look at, uh, you know, all their holdings, uh, a lot of their holdings would be the financial stocks or the real estate REITs and then go into pharma and then industrials and tech. So these are things you want to do when you're doing your investing is always, uh, you know, evaluate what you're doing, you know, think about what you're doing. Um, you know, of course, uh, you always have two ways of investing. You got uh, people who are investing for growth and uh, companies that are growth companies usually don't pay any dividend. And so you're uh, kind of beholden by how well the businesses run and are they growing their earnings. Um, I got mostly uh, dividend paying stocks. And so my stocks are more of stocks that I uh, know that the growth is not gonna be there. Uh, you know, a lot of them, are well-known companies that they do have growth, but um, I'm looking at that dividend payout because of course, uh, when you start investing, you wanna start as young as you can because the younger you start, the more time in the market you got. The more time in the market you got and uh, the longer uh, time, well, the more time you have to watch dividends and compounding of your interest to start taking effect. I uh, got a lot of dividends paying stocks that uh, I would say the yield is rather high, you know, between five and 10%. And that's one thing I was looking for. I'm uh, 45 years old and I wanted to, uh, you know, have a, a income started that uh, 
you know, is, is not something I have to work for. You know, uh, you definitely uh, got to have a job. You definitely want some type of uh, other side hustles. But, um, you know, having stocks and dividend paying stocks is a great way to have a uh, passive income. Um, another thing I was thinking about, uh, I was uh, looking back on how I got started and one thing that happened to me last year was I got sick and uh, had to stay in the hospital and, you know, luckily I have insurance through my job, but the stay in the hospital was very costly and, uh, you know, coming out of that, I, I had my uh, stocks up to around uh, 12 grand at the time and then, you know, going to the hospital and getting hit with so many types of bills so many type of problems all at the same time, you know, luckily the dividends were coming in and it was, uh, you know, helping to build my stocks. But at the same time, when the bills came in, I said, well, one thing that would be smart is to go ahead and, you know, put a lump sum down on what I owe the hospitals. Some of the other bills, you know, you get your radiologist, you get your lab work bills, a couple other bills for the doctors and nurses. So uh, at the same time, uh, my insurance, I pay uh, every six months on my insurance for cars. And so that was coming up in, the, in December. Plus, you know, of course you have Christmas coming up. So uh, I took that time to say, you know, the dividends throughout the year of 2022 were great and it was doing what it what I wanted to do, but uh, it'd be smart to get a jump on some of those bills. So I didn't make any real changes. I, I still paid my insurance off. I, uh, you know, put a lump sum on the uh, bills for my hospital stay, you know, still had a good Christmas. My sister came down from Chicago with her two kids and her husband and you know, certainly my brother, I, you know, gave him a good uh, Christmas and everything. You know, mom and dad, everybody. And so I didn't, well, didn't have to change anything because, you know, that's the benefit of investing is, you know, you're putting yourself in a better position versus if all you're doing is working and all you're doing is working for a check and then you're cutting that, you're, you know, you're caught in that rat, rat race where you're living check to check. Well, um, looking back now, everything kind of worked out for me. Uh, you know, I did take a good amount of money out. Uh, right now, I'm just back at around, uh, you know, eight and a half thousand uh, in, the, in my uh, brokerage account, which is fine. Um, in uh, February, I kind of looked at uh, where I pulled the money from, uh, where I got my dividends, and, you know, uh, one thing that happened was uh, I had a dividend come in around December when I wanted to pay on all that stuff and after that dividend came in I kind of just wiped out and pulled out all that stock and you know used that stock to cover everything and the way I had my dividend set up was uh, you know I had the stock to pay me on the first week of the month. Uh, I have some stocks that pay me kind of halfway through the month. Then I have a, a stock, uh, a Prospect uh, Capital. They pay me uh, around the 20th, around the third week of the month. And then a lot of the ETFs uh, will pay right at the end of the month. Some will pay on the first of the month, which to me is kind of just like still the end of the month, you know. Uh, if I was to have to buy a stock and want that uh, payout, well, it'd have to be that same month. And even if it's uh, the end of the month or the first, well, you know, it all to me is in that month. So I kind of looked at that and tallied it up and I said, okay, that wasn't half bad. And then, uh, you know, in January, in February, I kind of took that time to start buying back some of that stock that I wiped out. And so 
uh, kind of got back on that stock to getting a dividend, uh, which was a small amount of, you know, 48 cents. You know, you do that like, you know, 12 times of, uh, during the year. You know, what is that? Like around close to six bucks a year. But of course, I'm going to be building that up. Um, and then uh, when I looked at all the dividend payouts I had for the month, I still ended up kind of getting around $70 in my dividend payouts, which is good. You know, to me, that's, you know, one of my higher stocks. I could probably buy two or, or one or two of them. I think my uh, my cover call ETFs are around $70. $74. So that would, you know, with a little bit on my ha on behalf would be one stock. But uh, a lot of my other stocks, you know, are very affordable. And so when you look at the compounding effect, you know, that would be no problem to go ahead and buy a lot of those and boost the payout. You know, if the payout on a monthly basis is six to 10 cents, you know, you know, if I'm able to buy three, four of them a month, you know, that's boosting your payout, you know, between 20, 40 cents each month, you're going up, up, up. And uh, that's uh, what, you know, people looking for income out of their dividends are trying to do. They're trying to uh, build a steady stream of income that's passive and that you don't have to work for. And so I wanted to talk to everybody about that because um, a lot of people are thinking about wanting to get into uh, investing. They think to themselves, well, you know, uh, I know the basics of investing, you know, get into a stock while it's low, then when it runs up, sell it and get a profit. But that's easier said than done because when you're in it, there's that uh, factor of ex excitement uh, there's that uh, factor of second guessing yourself, and then there's that uh, idea that when you see a stock go up, you know, is it going up how far? You know, is it going to double in price? You know, could it triple in price? Uh, could it go up and stay up for a long time? And then when you want to make some money off of it, uh, you know, if I pull it out now, you know, I don't know the next stock I want to put my money into um, that I can trust to say, you know, I know when, when the growth is going to come, you know. And so that doesn't help somebody who only uh, really uh, vetted and uh, invested in one stock. Like, um, you know, the Bing stock that everybody loves right now is uh, Tesla. You know, Tesla is a stock that is... Uh, kind of breaking through walls, even though Elon Musk is out there, uh, you know, doing all kind of crazy mess and, you know, buying Twitter, putting his thumb on political uh, spaces. And, you know, that makes people really giddy, uh, kind of, you know, I want to say nervous. And then when it's time to, uh, you know, decide, you know, what do I want to do with my money? You know, I don't trust this guy. You know, he's starting to, you know, do something crazy with his uh, company. So then you got to spend all that time again trying to say to yourself, you know, what's the next big thing? You know, I don't know a lot about other stocks. But in all actuality, an easy way to find out about a lot of stocks is to, you know, look at some of the indexes or some of the exchange-traded funds. You got to... Uh, some of the good, well-known ones that people like, like the SPY or SCHD uh, or the uh, VTI is all the stocks in the stock market. But uh, by the amount of holdings that they have, that kind of gives you an idea of gauge on, of, you know, you know, this ETF is holding, you know, 40% of, of this Apple or this Microsoft stock you know, maybe this is a good stock for me to get into, you know, and then you do a little bit of your research. And uh, another thing to think about, uh, people don't know where to research um, 
there's a lot of different websites you can go to. Uh, you can go to brokerage account websites and get some of that information. You can go to the uh, website of the ETF that you're trying to get into to find out that information. But um, uh, when you look at uh, what the holdings are, you know, on a SCHD, you might see, uh, you know, Apple, Microsoft, then you might see, um, you know, some pharmaceutical companies, you know, like an Eli Lilly or something like that. And then you want to, you know, step back and say, okay, if this ETF is holding this many of this company, you know, let me research this. Let me go to, you know, Yahoo Finance, put their uh, ticker in and, you know, get some of the nuts and bolts on about, you know, how well this stock is doing. Um, you know, there's also uh, NASDAQ.com. You can go there. Uh, which is one I like to go to because also if you want to find out, uh, if you're a dividend uh, investor like me, if you want to find out uh, when the, uh, you know, ex-dividend date is, when the... Uh, the library will be closing in 15 minutes. Okay, Thank when the uh, payout is, yeah. you can go ahead and do that. Um, you can find out exactly... Uh, when that payout is, you can find out uh, when you need to be holding it to receive the payout. And that's uh, one thing I try to do because just like I said, uh, when I needed to use the money, you know, and take out a good chunk of the money, um, you know, I needed to evaluate which one, you know, can I pull out now where I'm not affecting, you know, my next payout, the dividend payout for the month. So um, those are one of the things I wanted to talk to you about uh, this uh, second uh, video. Uh, again, uh, if you'd like to, you know, you know, hear a thought uh, evaluation of what I'm doing, uh, and you like the content I'm giving out, uh, you know, like and subscribe to the, uh, my channel. Uh, you know, become a, a subscriber and hit that notification bell, and. Uh, Certainly, I will see you in the next one.